Lou, I hope you don't mind that you're on camera, but you know, I've been thinking about Laurel and Yanny all day like everybody else oh, has. Oh, yeah, you spoke too. Too. Yeah, so um, the New York Times made this tool and they figured out a way to accentuate different frequencies in the audio clip. So I don't know, accentuate different frequencies, but it's a little bar and as you slide it, I, I don't know, for me, hold on, hold on, I'll tell you what it does for me. So for me, when it's here, it's completely laurel. As it goes this way, it's way more laurel. And as we go this way, when we get to about that point, I start to hear Yanny. And then there, I, I hear completely Yanny. So I mess around with it a little bit. Laurel. I hear laurel. Laurel. Okay, and it's in the middle. Laurel. Yeah, it's all over there. Wait, that's completely Yanny to me now. Yeah, completely Yanny. Back to Laurel. Yanny. You're still Yanny? Keep it there. Before, I could almost hear Laurel. I can make it change each time by mouthing my right when it's in the middle. No, no, no. by mouthing it. By mouthing Laurel or Yanny. When when I was doing it, I was looking at the word Yanny and then looking at the word Laurel, and there was a certain point on that slider where I could make it be either one in my head, depending on the word I was looking at, the text. But you're telling me so, right when it's in the middle, right there. Like in the middle, which is probably what it's on the video. Yeah. Right there, it's a little bit more yanny to me. But if I scoot it just a teeny bit, like just a teeny bit. Too. Right there. Yeah. Totally Laurel? No. I can change it, interchange it whenever I want. Okay, for me right now, it, it's Yanny, which hasn't been happening. But it is, it's Yanny for me right now. Now, the fact that Louis says that he can change from one to the other by whatever he mouths is very interesting to me. It doesn't work for me. The thing that works for me is what I just showed you. Reading it as text, Yammy or Yanny, Laurel. If I read it, my mind can switch it. That's a crazy mind trick, but I can do it. But when Louis said that he could switch it by his mouth, it reminded me of this cool thing I know about choral directing. Now, say you're directing a choir of a bunch of people and you've got tenors, altos, and sopranos. And maybe you don't think the alto part is coming out enough and you wish that it would come out more or be louder. If you're conducting these people and you start to think the alto part in your head and I mean you're mouthing the words to the people as you're conducting them you know and but all you have to do is just think of the alto part in your head while you mouth the words and all of a sudden the altos will get louder it's absolute craziness but this totally reminds me of the same kind of thing I'm sorry I'm excited about it I it's it's, it's my ears it's my livelihood it's important to me <laughs> Another thing I want to mention is that yan yan is a very high frequency sounding kind of pitch and lo is a very low frequency sounding kind of pitch. Yan is really uh it's really forward in the mouth and lo is really further back. And so they've traced it to this boy, um 18 year old who is in an English class and he just simply looked up on vocabulary.com the word laurel, which means some kind of a headdress or flowers on your head or a veil or something. I can't remember. But anyway, it's the robot voice from vocabulary.com. That's where it came from. But he recorded it and there must have been some kind of a fan in his house. So apparently he was playing it to his English class as part of homework. 
And everybody was like, that doesn't say Laurel, that says Yanny, or something like that when it was played back. And then they got into this debate in their English class, and then he put it as a thread on Reddit, and it got picked up by a YouTuber. Anyway, that's how it started, but I think it has to do with the frequency of the fan, and also probably the, you know, the phone that it was recorded on coming out of his, like, laptop speaker, through his phone microphone, and then, and then probably being played through either a Bluetooth speaker or his phone in the English class. So different frequencies taking into account the fan that you can hear in the background just all add up to some kind of a switch in your brain. I know everybody's gonna be sick of talking about it by the end of the day. They probably already are. I'm a little sick of it too, but it's really interesting to me. And, um, and I think it's cool. And I don't think it's an age thing. I think it's a perception, somehow. I created this poll on Facebook a few hours ago to see if it mattered how old you were, which thing you heard. Doesn't seem to matter one bit. That I only have 103 votes at this point, but that's what I've learned so far. It doesn't matter. My mom, who is nearly 60, sorry mom, hears Yanny, but also my friend's little girls who are five and three hear Yanny. So it's, yeah, it's totally, a crapshoot as far as age goes. So I've watched the videos where they adjust the frequencies. It does nothing for me. Where they make it more lows, where they take out the highs, where they you know do the opposite, that does nothing for me. Also, it makes absolutely no difference to me if I hear it through my phone speaker or a nice speaker. Neither one makes a difference. I'm probably gonna have to leave it to like Adam Neely to actually put a name to it, like a scientific name because I just don't have time to do all the research today, but I kind of wanted to take you on my journey just of how I've been thinking about it today. I'm sure there's a whole study to be done of oral perception. Suppose, however, we were to move from the world of the eye to the world of sound as heard. That note or tone fills the whole of my oral field, my heard space. It doesn't occupy a bounded location within a bigger space. It is everywhere in my heard space. There is no zone, so to speak, where the sound is not in the space I hear, where the sound isn't in the space I hear. Suppose I play a second note or tone along with the first. That second tone also fills the same heard space, yet I hear it as distinct, irreducibly different. In the world of heard sound, two different things can be in the same space at the same time and be heard as different. Also, if you concentrate really hard, you can hear the top end of it. It sounds like a whisper. It's like... And then if you listen even closer, it's like... E, there's like an E at the end. That's where the Yanny comes from. Those are the high frequencies. And when you've got the slider slightly toward Yanny, that's when you can start to lock in on it. In conclusion, it's possible to hear two things at once. It's possible to trick your brain into hearing either one that you want, maybe depending on the text that your eyes are reading or the the shape that your mouth is forming, the thought that you're having that sends this signal to your mouth, something like that. Our perception can be changed by our minds and our brains. And what we hear is all relative somehow. So interesting. Thanks so much for watching Amy Nolte Music. I hope you learned a thing or two. I also hope you don't think it's stupid to talk about and like we're all just these dumb internet fiends that, you know, latch on to whatever there is at the moment. Because to me, there's all these facets to it, and I think it's really cool. Also, also, how cool is it that we as a planet in 2018 can discover something, quickly share it with the world, ask why, teach each other why, learn from each other, grow together. Thanks for indulging me and going on my little journey today. I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.